We're magic. You know that? Do you know that? Say that with me. I am magic. And believe it. You know, I love it in the first uh, Harry Potter uh, book or movie. There's a point where Hagrid looks at Harry early on and says to him, Harry, you're a wizard. And there's something within us that says, yes, this is true of me. We all have a muggle nature, don't we? Oh, no, no, not me. I, I, I really can't do much of anything. No, I, I'm not me. We're wizards. Our word is our wand. Our imaging quality is our wand. We create our lives. We are magic. Breathe that in with me. What a way to start the year remembering that truth, right? We're magic. Ah. Where's that song from? Is that a movie? That's by Jan Garrett. That's coming down. Okay. It's available. It's available. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know Jan and, and his partner. I see what they can't think of. Yeah. Ah, so we're starting a new year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. We're starting a new year, and so ma many of you who have been with the journey for us last year remember that we were working on the idea of creating a world that works for all, that um, most of the religious science centers around the country were working on that theme. And so this year we're, we're having a new theme, and that is living our values in the world. And I look at this as, as an extension of creating a world that works for all, because if we're living our values, we've got a world that works for all, right? And so we're working on this idea of living our values in the world. That's our theme that we're going to look at for the whole, this whole coming year. Our community spiritual director of the whole organization, uh, Dr. Ken Gordon, says, a value is an important and lasting belief or ideal that encapsulates what an individual or member of a culture holds to be good and desirable. Individual values influence our behavior and attitude and therefore serve as a basis for expression in all situations. A value exemplifies a person's principles and brings light and action to what the individual holds as being important in life. And so we're going to look at that. What is important in our lives? See, our values are the light of our life. It's one of the reasons I use the quote from the Quran. I love the idea of light. We're going to play with this a little bit further into the talk. But they are the light of our life. Our values enlighten our life. They enlighten who we are. When we're aware of our values, of our true values, of our really uh, honest and, and inherent values, okay? when we're aware of our life and we live truly from those values, we feel in alignment. We live an authentic life. We're living authentically. And if you're like me, we have your, you, know, you have areas in which you're living in alignment and feeling authentic, and areas in which maybe not quite so much just yet. Okay? And so we look at those values, and when we feel out of alignment with those, we really have a value that's here. It's just not, I'm not living from that. Because when I look at a value, I say, I ask myself, the, the, real, the real nature of that question is, what is valuable to me? A value is what is valuable to me. And I, I gave the example in the first service. I value health and fitness. I'm an exemplification of that, right? Because I don't value that enough to where that's my core value. That's a, I value chocolate and good food and not exercising too much and being comfortable staying home, watching football, <laughs> watching other people who are in shape. Okay. <laughs> I tend to value that more than my value of health and fitness, right? And so we all have those areas in our lives where we say that we value this, but we really value this over here. And so we're going to start to take a look at that, of how we can start to shift and be more in alignment with what it is we truly value. So the first thing to discover is, what are my true values, my real core values? At the Intentions Retreat, it's one of the first things we look at is, is after we kind of get rid of the stuff we don't want to hang on to, uh, we start to take a look at what are my true values? What is it that I truly value? Because before I can ever set an intention and move forward, I need to know what do I value? What do I just plain old value in my life? And so that's one of the first things we do. It's one of the things I invite you to take a look at this year. Many times we're living by values given to us by other people or through circumstances in life. 
And they may be good values or they may have once been good values, but are they our own? Are they really our values? Are they appropriate for our current life? See, when I grew up as a kid, a good value was to stay invisible. Keep my head down, don't be seen, okay? It was, it was a good value in my family growing up, okay? It's not anymore. Can you imagine a, bit, a minister wanting to be invisible and not be seen? Okay. Doesn't work, right? Even the video doesn't work that way. Okay, so are our values current to what we are today? Are they current to our highest self, our truest self? Are they current to what we really, really want to express? Because see, how many kids do you know that really want to be invisible? Really want to be invisible? Not too many, right? Most kids are kind of out there being, having fun. Life is fun. Okay. So are they built on outdated belief systems? Are they built on things from our past? Or are we in touch with what our values are? So whatever our values are, we can consciously choose new values or values that really represent our highest self. And we do that by simply taking some time to listen and by noticing where we feel out of alignment and what the value we want to have that would allow us to feel in alignment. So I want to take a quote from Ernest Holmes, a fairly long one. We're going to kind of break this down a little bit as we go through it. This is from page 411 of the Science of Mind textbook. I love this page. This page 4. 10 to about 413 are powerful, wonderful pages if you ever want to just pick up the book and open to it. And he says, The light is greater than the darkness, nor has the darkness any power over the light. By merely bringing in the light, the darkness vanishes into its native nothingness or nothingness. This is the power of reality over seeming opposition or apparent separation. So the light is our true self. Our light is our conscious values, our, our core values, our, our real honest values. That's the light. And when we bring it in, what, what I love is that phrase that he uses there at the end of it. This is the power of reality. That's a capital R reality over seeming opposition or apparent separation. See, the infinite presence is a whole. It's one. We're all one. So there can't be any opposition. The infinite isn't in opposition to itself, Right? Because if it was, it would cease to exist. It would collapse in on itself. There can't be any separation, because if there's only one, and it's a unity, which it is, there's no point of space and time where there's separation from the infinite. But we experience that. We feel that sometimes. We feel like we're separate. We feel like we're dealing with something that is in opposition to the good. But what he says is, if we let our light shine, the appearance of that dissipates because it's not real. It's not real reality. So our work is not to be in con combat with the darkness or in contention with the darkness, but to simply allow our light and who we are to shine. He goes on to say, the relationship between the individual and the universal mind is one of reflection. What we image for ourselves, the universal mind images for us. Isn't that a great line? As I image it for myself, the entire universe is backing me up, saying yes. There's a wonderful, um, Michael Beckwith has a CD out that uh, maybe a few of you have heard, and at one point he's up there, and, and if you've never heard Michael Beckwith, he sometimes gets worked up. He's what I call kind of a Baptist New Thought preacher, you know? <laughs> and uh, so he's sitting, he's sitting there going along, and he goes, we are backed up by the universe, backed up by the universe, backed up by the universe. I love it. I love it. And we are. That's the truth. And it's our imaging quality. When we, what we image is literally backed up by the universe. The universe has our back. Okay. And so it's, it's important then to say, so what am I imaging? What am I using my wand to create? What am I using my magic power to create? Because I am. He goes on to say, we can sit in the shade or move into the sunlight. We can sit in the shade or move into the sunlight. The law of mind as quickly creates one form as another for us. And I love that. The law of mind will as quickly create one form as another. Who chooses the form? We get to. We get to choose the form. And we must allow the patterns of our thought to become molded to the highest sense of reality we possess. 
In other words, what are the highest values? What's the highest sense of what I want to express? And allow our mind to become molded to that. By giving our complete attention to one idea, we automatically embody it. The thought becomes a thing. The mental state takes on form, color, and temporary reality. And I like that word, that phrase, temporary reality. Everything that we perceive here on physical form is a temporary reality, right? Everything is. The Hindus tell us that all forms that are born must die. Everything that arises must fall. Quantum physics says the same thing. You know, energy, it's, it's, there's an energy soup and it shows up as wave or particle depending on how we pay attention to it. And when we lose our attention on that, it goes back into the energy soup. It goes back to the field of infinite possibility. So everything, the chair you're sitting on will one day no longer be a chair. Right? The car that we're driving, any of us are driving, will one day no longer be you know, a drivable car. It will die. It will get turned back into metal. Even if it's a plastic bottle or, or a piece of, what is it, some nuclear fission material that has a half-life of billions of years, at some point it will no longer be. Okay? Scientists tell us that, that the sun, at some point in time, not real soon, you don't have to panic, Okay, don't rush out and buy groceries, but will go supernova and will no longer be. Okay? So everything is temporary reality. So the situations that are existing in our lives are temporary reality. Sometimes they look so real, aren't they? So convincing, so right there. Yeah, that thing's really real. No, it's actually really not. It's all temporary reality, and we get to create with it. We get to play with it. He says, we outwardly experience our states of consciousness. I love and hate that phrase. We outwardly experience our states of consciousness. So anything that's happening out here is a reflection of my state of consciousness. And that, like I like to say, is the good news, bad news of this teaching. Okay? It's a reflection of our consciousness. The apparent without is merely a reflection of the within, which is its cause. Mm, take a breath with me. So we get to explore what are our values. We get to explore from where in the depths of me do I really want to create? Because the value is what we really want to create and then it finds ways to show up. What is it that I really want to create? In clarifying our values, we need to look and ask ourselves, does it bring greater good into the world? Does it bring greater life into the world? Does it take away from no one? Does it support my life and the lives of others? And so that's the values we want to have. Does it support a greater expression of the infinite life that we are part of? Once we clarify our values, then comes the next challenge, which is we have to commit to living from our values. I love uh, Paul in one of his letters says, the things I would do, I do not, and the things I would not do, I do. That's called a values conflict. Okay? It's what I experience when I you know, say I really want to be fit and go have another piece of cake. <laughs> Happened last night, just last night. <laughs> but that was last year. <laughs> that was just so 2016. <laughs> when we work in the intentions retreat, we set intentions, and then we look and say, but what are the cross intentions? What is the intention that I say that I want, and what is the intention that I really have that I know will be in opposition to that intention? What is it that will thwart me? Okay, so, you know, I have, because I put out into the congregation just recently, and, and well, actually for probably about two and a half years, that I really like chocolate. A lot of you love me so much that you bring me a lot of chocolate. You know, Bill and Shirley sit in the kitchen and say, hey, we got brownies for you today, you know? And they, they make them smell really good every time I walk by. I didn't even go into the social hall today because I just didn't want to look at all the chocolate that was sitting in there. Actually, I walked in briefly, but I walked out without touching anything. <laughs> honest, honest, didn't touch anything. What are the cross intentions? What are our cross values? What is it that will take us away? And then can we set up a structure that will guide us to where we want to go? A friend of mine who, who created a, a whole, um, in the 80s, a program for uh, personal growth, uh, 
was from Boston, and he said that the roads in Boston were designed by cows. <laughs> Quite literally. And if you've ever been to Boston, you will believe this. Okay? And what it was was that, you know, outside of the original colony was the, the whole kind of farming area and like that, and there's a number of hills outside of Boston, and the cows would take the easiest path to get around the hill to go to get back either to their pasture or to come back to the barn. And then later on, those became the roads because the structure was already in place. Okay? And so we have structures in our own lives that are so in place. A friend of mine was saying on the way out of the first service, he said, this week, my, both my television and my computer are not working. And I've had to create new structures in my life for how to spend my time. I've actually had the experience. Cynthia's out of town this week up in Portland. Okay? And so different things are happening in the household than when Cynthia's around. Some are good, some she'll be taken care of when she gets back, but no. <laughs> no. Actually, the laundry is done, the dishes are done, so we're good. You know, but just some different structures are happening because of, the, or different things are happening because the structure is a little bit differently, different. So what are the structures we need to create to allow the values to express? And we might look at that for ourselves. If I really do have a value of health, then do I get rid of all the chocolate out of my house and allow no more in? Do I stay away from Bill and Shirley, at least when they're serving brownies? They're really nice people, by the way. But do I stay away from that, and do I schedule myself to exercise on a regular basis? Okay? Do I place a value on something other than my comfort and my indulging in, in comfortable food? What do I, what do I, what's the structure that I create? And I have to hold those values in both easy and difficult circumstances. You know, I had, I shared in the first service, th this is how this whole process works. This is a really small thing, but it's how it works. If you drove into this church this morning at the first service and looked at our sign out there, it was still advertising the Christmas Eve service. Okay? If you drove into the second service, it's not. But in the first service, it was still advertising the Christmas Eve service. Now, I thought about this last Monday. But it was a holiday, I had family in town, Cynthia was you know, getting ready to head to Portland and, and all this stuff, and so it was Monday, I didn't, you know, I'll, I'll deal with it later in the week. Okay? Tuesday, I drive into work, I see the sign, oh, I gotta change that sign. Get in, hit my office, stuff starts happening, and 7.30 that night, I drive back out and I look at the sign and say, dang, I didn't change the sign today. Got busy. Wednesday morning, drive in, look at the sign, oh, gotta change that sign today. Wednesday night, 8.30, drive out, oh, dang. Got busy. Thursday's my day off. I want my time. I've got a bunch of stuff I've got to get done today. You know, kids are coming to visit. By the way, my, my daughter and, and, and son-in-law, Ben, and, and Eileen are over here, and their beautiful uh, child, my grandson, Theo, is out in the cottage, and they're here visiting. And so I've got to get a bunch of stuff done today. Don't want to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. How many, when does tomorrow come? <laughs> yeah, never. Okay. And so, of course, and then by Saturday, I'm driving around. I happen to be driving around town. I looked, and, oh, hey, First Methodist is still advertising their Christmas Eve service. <laughs> Reading Congregational down here on, on, on Victor, they still had their Christmas Eve service up. The Seventh-day Adventist Church still has their Christmas Eve service up. There's another church. Look at that, you know. Now, I have a value of excellence. I say I have a value of excellence, but is being a week late excellence? No. Did I call anybody? No. Okay? And so that's how it goes. And it's not that we ever intend for something to happen. It's not that I intended for that sign to still be the same this morning. But we get swamped, we get busy, we get all this stuff going on, and in our minds we just, you know, we just let it go. And fortunately, at first service, I had a volunteer who's here who has always told me, he says, whatever you need done, let me know. And that volunteer blessed their hearts. It was a couple went out and changed the sign. I don't even know what it says. They said, we're going to put up something fun and creative. I'll have to go look. I said, does it say that, you know, come see our crazy minister or what is it? We can do that. <laughs> we can make that happen. But that's how our intentions go. That's how our values go. We suddenly get distracted. We get busy. We get out. We don't have a structure that supports us in, in creating it. And just that fast. That, that old, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We're off and we're not doing them. Just that fast, I have a piece of chocolate in my mouth. Just that fast, 
You know, we say that, that cutting thing to our friend or our partner that we didn't really want to say. We let another month go by without asking the boss for a raise. We do whatever it is. We just kind of let it happen. And so the question is, do we have the power? Do we want to use the power that we have? Because we have the power to simply create a structure to guide us into expressing the values that we really, really, really want to express this year. Hannibal, not the one in the movies, but Hannibal, who, when he was crossing the Alps to invade Rome, would send soldiers up ahead on the path as he was crossing through the Alps in winter, dangerous journey, and he, they would like guiding bonfires, big bonfires, because he could keep the troops moving, but he wanted them moving in which way? The right direction, right? Because you get lost in the Alps in winter, you're dead. Okay? And he knew the way. He had found the path. So he sent the troops ahead to light these big bonfires to keep the troops moving in the right direction. Our values are our guiding bonfires. They keep us moving in the right direction. So what is my value? It's why every organization, including ours, has usually a vision and mission statement. This is where we're going. This is what we're about. We're here to inspire and empower people to live spiritually fulfilling lives. That's our vision here. Okay? What is our vision? What is it that we want to do? Why, why do we get up every morning? Why are we here? Okay. And so these are our lights to light us along the way, to keep us moving in the right way. So this week I want to invite us to do three things. The first one is begin to explore what our values must be. And the easiest way to do that is look at your life. Look at the things where you feel really in alignment, and that's where you're living in alignment with your values. Look at the places where you're feeling out of alignment, and what you know is you have a different value than the one you're living. And it's not something to beat yourself up about. It's just notice, I have a different value than the one I'm living. What's the value I really do have? What is it I would like to be creating here that I'm not? So the first place is just become aware. What are my values? I look at my life. It's a beautiful reflection of... What is it that I'm actually thinking? What is it that I'm actually feeling? What are my real values? Secondly, contemplate what you would like your values to be in those areas where you feel out of alignment. What's the real value I want to embody here? What is the real value that I want to embody? And then third, commit to living them. Commit to living those values. Start to create a structure because you have to... We each have a structure already in place to support us in living the values we're living now. And so if I want to live a different value, I have to create a different structure. So commit to start looking at how can I create a structure, a process that takes me down the road that I want to go instead of the other road. Many of us know that story, the person who, you know, the, what is a story in, in five chapters, I think it's called, of the person who walks down the street, falls in the hole, you know, and you know, takes a long time, pulls themselves out. The next day, they get up, they walk down the street, they fall in the hole again, but now they kind of know, you know, the hole a little bit. They get out a little more quickly. It still takes a while. Third day, they get up, they fall down the hole. They know this hole. They've been down this hole before. How many of us have been down that hole before? You know, and, you know, and we get ourselves out pretty quickly. The fourth day, they walk down the street. They see the hole and don't fall into it. The fifth day, they take a different street. And so that's what we do when we change our structures. We take a different street. We take a different road. So that's my invitation this week is begin to notice what your values are based on your life. Contemplate what you would like them to be in the areas where they're not in alignment. And then start to set up a structure, a, a process, a direction to help you with that. And things like taking classes here. You know, Mary's, Reverend Mary's teaching The Power of Decision. I love that book and I love that class. Uh, by Raymond Charles Barker. I'm doing the intentions retreat for the weekend and, and the Prosperity Plus class for 10 weeks. Uh, all of these processes, all of these will, will support you in doing that. And it's easier in a group. Have you ever noticed it's easier in a group? You know, Christmas Eve, we had all the candles lit up here for the, you know, each person's intention, each person's blessing for the year. And they're brighter together, aren't they? They're brighter together than taking one candle and putting it up here and another candle over there and another candle over there and maybe a candle out in the lobby or something like that. When they're all together, when they're all you know, in cohesion and all in alignment, they, share, they multiply the light. So being able to do this, being able to have the support of classes, of teachers, of fellow classmates, of, of a community to support us in the process is powerfully important. So allow yourself to be supported in creating the new values and the new directions. So 
And I invite you to do that this year. I want to close with a final quote from Ernest. Wherever the image of thought is set, there the power to create resides. Whatever we image, whatever we image, wherever we set our image, our imagination, is where we're creating. The power to create resides. God, if thou seest God, dust, if thou seest dust. Can we see good where evil appears to be? Then we can remove the evil. When we bring a lamp into a darkened room, where does the darkness go? The darkness neither came nor did it go anywhere. It never was a thing in itself, merely a condition. And we have power over conditions. Let's pray. There is one and only one. One infinite presence, one life, one light, one power. One wholeness. Only one. And since there is only one, we must be within that one. Completely and totally within that one. Mm. We ourselves are the life and the light and the love and the wholeness. That is the truth of us, of each person here. And so I speak my word that we remember that this year. We allow that truth to be our value, that we allow that truth to manifest so much more fully than ever before. We allow more of that life to express through us. We say yes to the greatness, to the power of who we are. We are magic. We are wizards. We get to create. We already are creating. And so we use our magic, we use our wizardry in alignment with our values, in alignment with the highest and greatest good of who we are, and say, let there be this. Let there be love. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be prosperity in every way for all. Let there be beauty. Let there be intelligence and wisdom. We use our creative power for that. I'm grateful for each person here who takes on and wakes up to that role as magicians, as wizards, as magi to allow ourselves to express this in the world. And for all the good that comes out of that expression, we are lights and our values light us. And so I release this word into a law, that process and knows exactly how to move it into form and expression, knows how to make it happen, because we don't have to make it happen. We simply have to be in alignment and open to it happening through us. And we say yes to that process. And we affirm it by together saying, and so it is. Bless you. Have a powerful new year. Thank you.